You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Our topic right now is that NLC and TUC are disagreeing on the protocol for planned strike. Remember that there had been that disagreement. TUC is having meetings or they had had meetings with the federal government on some occasions and the NLC was not part of it. And there was a, a warning strike which TUC did not did not participate uh, in. And now the mother of all strikes, as the NLC is putting it, is about to happen. In fact, the ultimatum expired today. And TUC and NLC are having that tussle, that fight, as it is. That's how a lot of people are seeing it. This disagreement may not be very good for our polity. But, um, we have uh, Mr. Bolahon Olojede, a public policy analyst who has joined us here in uh, Lagos to x-ray what is happening in uh, the labor circles. Bolahon, good morning and welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning. Nice to be here. Mm. Okay, NLC, TUC. There seemed to be like one body with uh, different sides, one coin with different sides. Now there seem to be disagreement. And so many people are looking at it like there's a kind of divide and rule that has entered there. So cause a dichotomy, and then they will not be speaking with one voice, and then you can do whatever you want to do as a government and get away with it. And they're even drawing uh, analogy from... Uh, uh, the ASU and another group that came up and was parallel to ASU, to cripple ASU. That's word on the street. What would you say uh, is happening in that sector and how does that affect the average Nigerian, this fight, perceived fight between the TUC and NLC? Well, um, for, for me, I, I, I believe that when things are like this, uh, most likely government will prefer it. Um, if you have two institutions of labor and they are not exactly uh, together, uh, what that means is that um, it, it, it reduces the chances of uh, industrial action. And where there, there are industrial actions, maybe it might not be as uh, pervasive or as effective as it could have been. Um, there, was a, there was a warning strike, for example, some weeks ago. Uh, anybody who was in Lagos uh, on those days knew that there was literally nothing uh, going on in Lagos State during those days of warning strike. Uh, banks were open, market were open, government offices were open, so you are asking who exactly uh, was not working on, on those days. Uh, and, and it wasn't just Lagos. There are you know, other states that mm. were just like that as well. So I think the main the main issue um, is one body uh, willing to um, jaw jaw the more with the government and the other body um, saying, look, government is just taking us for a ride. Doesn't appear as if uh, they are ready to do anything, you know. Uh, but for me as a citizen, uh, what is important is I would like a situation in which strikes are avoided. And whatever government needs to do, whatever also even labor has to do to ensure that as much as possible we can avoid strike is better. Because for every strike that happens, the people get poorer for it. All of the time. Losses, people not being able to do that. Businesses, economic activities, jeopardized, um, a, a, a contraction to uh, whatever could have been our GDP gain. On those days of the strikes out there, at the end of every strike, everything still end up on the table. So the question is, for me, is how government can make sure that we don't have to go on this strike and how labor can also, on their part, because what labor would like to say is that, look, uh, government doesn't seem to know any other language uh, that, or doesn't respond to any other language than this industrial action. Uh, and that is why probably uh, NLC is pushing for an industrial action. But my wish is that we will be able to actually have this talk without resolving to an industrial action. Because, like I said, for every time 
that we have to go in the direction of strike or industrial action, um, the country as a whole loses and people are more impoverished. So government has a list from labor, which um, it is supposed to have been working on. I think if the list comprises of 10 items, there's a possibility that you might not be able to have an agreement uh, for 10 items mm. for now. So if it is five that is ready, let's begin to roll out. Uh, the issue of uh, giving five, five billion to the state, for example, uh, could be a, a rollout on part, part of what is on that list. Can we even get more communication about those items that are on the list of labor? Which ones are ready for rollout now so that we can begin to roll them out? Why we'll continue to discuss on those other issues for which agreements have not been reached mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. rather than waiting for an entire list to be ready and then we roll out. These are the kind of things that I believe will help us reduce the chances that the industrial act will happen. Yeah, but, but now everybody talks about the fact that strikes, you know, one too many all the time, and uh, uh, jaw-jawing is better. But you ask yourself, now that the TUC had sat at table to talk with the federal government, what has come of it? Because if they accepted to dialogue and NLC didn't accept to dialogue, they were going to discuss the same things that NLC have been asking for. So what is the outcome? Even this morning, one of the headlines on the National Daily is a state, on those state, I think, asking the federal government to say where the five billion they are giving to all the states as palliatives is coming from. Because even the states do not know much about it. And you just talked about being uh, open about uh, whatever the demands of NLC are. If they are not even open about what they are giving to the states, how much more? But right now, what can be done? NLC is spoiling for a fight. Whether it was noticed in Lagos or not, there's a possibility when they actually go on strike, a lot of people will key in, not just because NLC has said it, but it gives them the opportunity to stay off work because you're factoring in your transportation, your feeding, your everything, and you say, this is an opportunity, let me just stay back home. So it might be a success. And if it's going to cripple the economy, what do you think can be done? Okay, um... Like I said, the, in my opinion, the communication regarding this strike matters, both on the side of the government and on the side of the two labor institutions, have not been good enough. I, I am supposed to be a, a, you know, a reasonably informed person. Uh, but I tell you, I don't know what is the entire leak that is being deliberated right now. I know at the onset uh, of this discussion, I could pick a few items. I remember vividly the issue of minimum wage. Mm. I remember the issue of alternative energy sources um, and, and a few other things. But if you ask me today, where exactly are we on any of those issues? I don't know. Is it the list that they started with that they are still discussing on another list? So the communication has to be better for us as citizens even to be able to judge what exactly is going on between labor and the government. Number two, like I said earlier, is that look, if we now know what this entire list is, uh, it, it is possible for us to, to even support the process to say, look, we agree with you, government, that this and this should be ready by now. I'm, I'm also surprised about Nundo State saying uh, they've not received anything in respect of the five billion, because there was a communication saying two, two billion had been credited to each of the 36 states and that some other um, uh, uh, measures. We even saw pictures of rice. Yeah, their, their, problem, their, problem, their problem is not that they haven't received. Their problem is what is the source of this money that is being given to the states? Where is it coming from? Are they borrowing? Is the federal government borrowing? Are they getting it from the uh, spoil subsidy that has been removed? Uh, where is it coming from? That communication has not reached on those state, according to that statement. Also, maybe the first thing they will have done is to return the one they got, since they don't know the song. <laughs> As a matter of fact, um, borrowing requires the assembly, the national assembly. 
Ondo mm. State has representatives both in the House of Representatives and in the Senate who are representing the good people of Ondo State. And they will have been involved at the level of approving a borrowing. Why don't they, they call their sons and daughters and ask them, this money they gave us, which you probably don't want, where did you guys get it? You know, maybe that would have been an issue. But what is clear, however, is that if the, the subsidy remover has led to a situation in which oil has moved from 180 something that we used to have all the way to 500, 600, there is a lot more money being made available at the center. Mm. And we saw this in the last pack allocation. This, the states moved from an allocation of about 600. Allocations are published anyway. I hope none of them will say they did not receive the allocation. Allocations moved from about an average of 600 billion, uh, you know, uh, 600 billion to about 900, you know. So if, if, if that happened, it means that each of the states in the last allocation also even received more money. So on those state, apart from asking the federal government for where it put the money it created, them should also be asking its own government what it did with the extra almost 30% additional allocation that it got the last time. The issue of, um, of uh, uh, um, palliative is not going to be a federal government affairs alone. The state, the local government, even the private sector, in my organization, we did a 25% salary review for people. That is my organization. I know organization that made all of all, all other steps, including maybe trying to introduce staff bonuses. Some said we introduce a hybrid, hybrid work environment. So some of those things played out in some institutions. It is not just the federal government. However, the federal government must do its bit. And the foot dragging on all the issues on discussion with labor must be resolved. If there are 10 items, it is, if it is five that is ready, if it is seven that is ready, let's roll out those ones that are ready while we finalize the discussion on those ones that are not ready. I, I would have expected, for example, that the issue of minimum wage, we would have been able to get somewhere on the issue of minimum wage by now. But I, I, I'm not so sure nobody has told us that anything has agreed on, on, on minimum wage. Yeah, well, it was on the news, was it yesterday or so, that... Uh the uh, the president is set to roll out new minimum wage by next month i think i don't know if that is in response to what the labor is asking for or he's just doing that on his own because if it is part of what the labor is asking for it should have come from you know uh, the labor that okay you have done this and uh, Another one that we are expecting is this and that. But labor is still going on like they have not been answered at all, which means if he's rolling out minimum wage, maybe there was no discussion even with the labor how much this minimum wage is going to be. But we are expecting that. Also this morning on a Daily Trust newspaper, we have a, a headline which is screaming at me right now. Subsidy back as federal government pays 169.4 billion naira in August. So we really don't understand what is happening. Like you said, communication is key, and it is not reaching us so much. So would we yeah. blame labor? You see, there, there is a, a bit of a problem, in my opinion, about how we have approached subsidy removal. Mm. And the consequences of, of that uh, is part of what is playing out. Now, what has been happening is that when you deregulate and you leave everything to the forces of the market. Uh, and the price of crude, don't forget that the crude price is the single largest item in the cost profile of the PM, of the refined product, PMS, that we consume. That singular, most important, most costly item has been going up. In fact, in the last three days, it has gone up very dramatically. But before even the last three days, it has been going up. So the question, the reality is that when the single largest contributor to the cost is going up the way crude oil price has been going up, you are bound to have very serious pressure on the price of the refined product. So the question that government is asking itself at this junction is, 
can I really subject this, you know, to the to the market force? Because if we do that, if we say that that same oil price that was just uh, eighty dollars or, or seventy something dollars a, a couple of months ago is now ninety something, and then the price has to go from six hundred uh, naira to a liter to maybe another seven uh, seven hundred or, or, or something around that figure, seven fifty. Would the people take it? And don't forget the dollar. The dollar is 980 naira, I think, right now, as at yesterday. Instead that exchange, of, Pep dollar. The competitors are there, and the pressure is very high on the price of PMS. Can we afford at this moment, without causing crisis, to say both the FX implication as well as the uh, uh, increase in crude oil price internationally? Those two combinations, you put it on the price of PMS. Now, what will PMS sell for in the market? So it, there is a possibility that that news item is very correct, that we have gone back at the back end and started to support the price of PMS all over again. Which means the subsidy removal is a scam, more or less. It means the subsidy removal is on a pause. Hmm. Okay, but we're concerned. Um, the way forward is what we're looking at. Labor and, okay, not labor and, uh, both of them are labor. TUC and the Nigerian Labor Congress. Um, if you were to advise them, what would you advise? Because tomorrow might be the beginning of a, a strike. We don't know because today the ultimatum they gave to the federal government will end. As at 12, uh, 12 a.m., it will end. So what is going to happen tomorrow? How will the government act right now? I don't know what they are going to say. You have given solutions to what they should have done, uh, but that would take more time. In the, in the, sh in the interim, the low-hanging fruits, what do you th advise the government to do and what do you advise labor to do? Let's wrap up. I will advise government to call the labor and uh, the TUC and NLC together again and review the list of this demand. And do a tick off, and do a tick off, and then have certain agreement and timeline mm. on how they exactly they will handle the remaining items mm. on the list. You know, and maybe that could persuade uh, labor to do a review or a review of their stance on the issues of uh, strike. I do not foresee a situation in which TUC. We join labor tomorrow anyway, even if the strike were to go ahead. And, uh, but however it is, we should avoid strike as much as possible. Mm. For every strike, we are impoverishing the nation and the individuals further. And that, at the end of the day, we will see now come back, come and have the same Georgia that we could have had today mm. to avoid the strike tomorrow. Okay. Our economy is too fragile right now to experience another strike. Uh, who knows if it's going to last another three months, four months, eight months. We don't know, so we don't want it. We'd like to thank you so much, Bolahon, for coming on the show this morning to help us uh, make sense to what is going on. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. We've been talking with Bola Honoloje Day, a public policy analyst, talking with us here in Lagos. We'll take a short break. When we return, another guest will join us for the second hot topic. Stay with us.